Every sewage system installation or repair is site specific and will come with its own intricacies depending on the size, intended use, its location in the province, site conditions and more. In this video, we are going to show you the installation of a conventional septic tank and in-ground filter bed. The installation is taking place at a beautiful waterfront property on the sandy shores of Georgian Bay. The owners have decided to tear down the existing dwelling and construct a new dwelling on the property. In doing this, a new sewage system is required to be installed prior to breaking ground on the house. Every job site should undergo a proper site evaluation by the installer to ensure the best results. You can learn about conducting a proper site evaluation by visiting our website at www.ua.org and visiting our industry resources page which provides access to many guidance documents produced by the association. We will be showing the initial site works, the excavation for and installation of the septic tank, the excavation of the base of the filter bed, the placement of the filter sand, stone, pipe, and filter cloth, the steel bars for future detection of the bed, and backfilling of the entire system. This video has been created by the Ontario On-Site Wastewater Association in partnership with the property owners, Father and Son Construction, On-Site Septic Solutions, Tatham Engineering, and the Township of Tiny. I am Kirk Hastings of On-Site Septic Solutions, a company I started 20 years ago. I am second generation in the septic installation and repair business, formerly Ross Hastings Construction, which has been servicing Simcoe County since 1959. I have 33 years in the wastewater industry and have been a proud member of the Ontario On-Site Wastewater Association since its inception. On-Site Septic Solutions has past experience in residential, commercial and institutional sewage treatment system installations of all shapes and sizes. We are leaders in promoting advanced treatment systems when they are deemed appropriate for the application. To date, we have installed over 2,000 septic systems. My colleagues Matthew Beddows, Sean Ritchie and Cole Jansen will be demonstrating a class 4 filter bed system installation for you today along the sandy shores of Georgian Bay in the township of Tiny. My name is Bill Goodale and I work for Tatham Engineering. I'm also the Part 8 regulator here in the township of Tiny. I've worked for Tatham for over 25 years now and 22 of those have been here in Tiny. So my job includes uh, inspecting all the sewage system installations like the one non-site septic solutions is installing here today. I'm also the vice president of the Ontario On-Site Wastewater Association which is the organization that's bringing you this video today. Now I'm going to be inspecting the sewage system, recording results on my tablet and if everything complies with the requirements in the Ontario Building Code it'll be passed and then it can be backfilled. The first step in this installation is to clear the site of any obstructions, including trees, shrubs, and grass, leaving a blank canvas to work with. The installer will then shoot grades on the site with a laser level and use this data to ensure that Ontario Building Code requirements in relation to the depth and slope of the excavation are met. If not properly installed, the life expectancy of the system may be reduced. After marking the corners of the bed with stakes and or painted lines, the installer begins the excavation and loads the material into a dump truck. Using the data formerly set from shooting grade, the installer will check grades multiple times throughout the process of the excavation to ensure that the base is at the proper elevation. The worker manually assists the equipment operator in the finer work of leveling out the base of the filter bed. After shooting grade at ground level beside the bed, the worker will measure the depth of the bed using a grade stick. To ensure proper functioning of the bed and compliance with the Ontario Building Code, or OBC for short, the installer will scarify the base using the teeth of the excavator bucket and a rake. Per the OBC, a filter bed needs a minimum depth of 750 millimeters of filter sand. Prior to the installation, it is recommended that the installer requests from the sand supplier the results of a grain size analysis performed within the last six months. If this is not available, it is highly recommended that the contractor requests an updated test or makes arrangements to have the sand tested at his or her own expense prior to importing any material to the site. 
The worker checks grade again to ensure the excavation is deep enough to meet the measurement requirements for each layer of the installation. The worker marks the height requirement of the sand with spray paint for the equipment operator to see. Placing the filter sand in the excavated hole begins. It is recommended that the installer inspect the material delivered to site to ensure it matches the specifications previously provided by the aggregate supplier. It is important that the top of the filter sand is at the proper level to ensure code compliance. If a gravity distribution system is not leveled properly, it can result in one portion of the filter bed being heavily loaded and little to no load on the rest of the bed, ultimately leading to improper treatment of the effluent. Thus, the installer will check for level elevations often and use clean rakes so as not to contaminate the material. For more information on this topic, refer to UWA's Sand Filter Bed Design and Installation Guidance Document found on our website. To ensure that the 750 mm minimum requirement is being met, the installer checks grade again. The next layer in the filter bed is washed septic stone. The purpose of the stone is to further spread the effluent evenly over the surface of the filter sand. Per the OBC, a minimum of 150 mm of washed septic stone is required below the distribution pipes. It is recommended to exceed the minimum if possible. The installer constantly checks grade for proper elevation to ensure that the minimums are being met. Once the sand and stone have been placed, the distribution pipes, header or distribution box, and footer can be installed. The installer checks the distance from the edge of the pipe to the edge of the excavation. The distance between each of the runs of distribution pipe must not exceed 1.2 meters. Cover the pipes with the washed septic stone and fine tune the percent drop to be within 30 to 50 millimeters for every 10 meters of pipe. Check grade and shift the stone beneath at different intervals as needed. Once the pipes have been laid, place rebar at the beginning and end of each line of pipe and at the distribution box. This serves as a means of detecting the location of the bed in future after it has been backfilled. To learn more about methods of detection, refer to our guidance document on our website. Measure out the location of the septic tank and mark it with spray paint for the equipment operator. Note that there is no required setback from the bed to the tank. Measure from the property line to the tank location to ensure that all required setbacks are being met. Ensure that the excavation for the tank is larger than the tank itself and that proper trench safety measures are being used. Check grades and manually level the bottom of the hole. Ensure that the base material and base compaction of the tank meet the tank manufacturer's recommendations. Place the septic tank in the hole. Measure the clearance distances using stakes and string and check that it is level. Check the depth of the tank to ensure the outlet pipe can be connected to the distribution box. Begin backfilling in 12-inch lifts around the tank and using a packer, ensure that the soil receives proper compaction. Install risers to bring the lids to grade if necessary. Connect the outlet to the tank and distribution pipe to the header in the filter bed. Glue all fittings to ensure a proper seal. Note that the soil beneath the pipe needs to be properly compacted to prevent the pipes from sagging. At this point, an inspection by the regulatory body should be requested and carried out. The inspector will check that the safety grates, inlet baffle, and effluent filter are present. He or she will check the distance between the pipes, the width and length of the bed ensuring the area size is correct, measure all setback requirements, and check the size of the washed septic stone. Depending on the type of system, complexity, and the jurisdiction where the work is taking place, more inspection requirements may need to be met. Refer to our inspection's guidance document on our website to learn more. Once the inspection is complete and satisfactory, the installer can begin placing permeable geotextile over the pipes. This is a breathable material that protects the bed from finer particles washing into the stone and clogging it. The worker must screw in the safety grates using stainless steel screws to prevent rusting over time. 
Proper backfilling is required for all leaching beds to allow for proper treatment and dispersal of the effluent. Be sure to backfill and grade the surface of the bed so that there are no surface depressions and so that the surface water drains away from the bed. Cover the leaching bed with an appropriate depth of material to protect it, but not so much cover that it limits air movement through the soil. Follow this with 100 to 150 millimeters of topsoil. Use seed and or sod and proper grading practices on the sides of the bed to prevent erosion. Additional recommendations for installations include avoid construction on wet soil as it reduces the chance of overcompaction and smearing of the soil. Be sure to use low load construction vehicles with tracks. Always keep the sand between the vehicle and the soil during construction. Make sure to add the sand, soil, and aggregate materials from the upslope side of the system being worked on. Most importantly, keep all equipment and vehicles off the absorption area at all times. Too much weight could damage all your hard work. When properly designed, installed, and maintained in areas of good permeable native soils, filter beds have a life expectancy similar to other conventional septic systems and can last for upwards of 20 years or more. Life expectancy of filter beds can be greatly reduced if it is constructed incorrectly. Examples of this include using aggregate materials that do not meet specifications, such as sand with too many fine particles, sizing the system incorrectly to try and avoid lot constraints, installing at improper depths that can affect oxygen transfer, or not achieving even distribution of the effluent. Equally important is the care and maintenance of the system after installation. UA has several resources available, including brochures that can be shared with your client and video resources that discuss the proper care and maintenance of their system, all of which can be accessed on our website free of charge. Sewage systems are a critical piece of infrastructure. Proper installation and ongoing maintenance and care is vital to protecting human health and the environment we live in. UA is a not-for-profit association that represents professionals who work in the industry. For over 20 years, with our partners from private and public sectors, we have provided networking and skills development opportunities, technical information, and best practice guidance to our members and beyond. Our vision is to be the driving force and leading source of knowledgeable, professional expertise for on-site and decentralized wastewater management. Check us out at www.oowa.org to access our free resources for homeowners and industry professionals alike, learn about membership, and see upcoming events. If you have any questions about this video or about the association in general, contact us with the information provided on screen.